Hello, everyone, and welcome to 2K Sports. I'm Damon Bruce. It's Tuesday night basketball. It's Jameer Nelson and the Orlando Magic going up against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And now let's go to... Hello, everyone. Get ready for NBA action live on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan, joined by my partner, Steve Kerr and Clark Kellogg. It's Western Conference against the Eastern Conference here in Minnesota where the Timberwolves will try to protect home court. This, of course, their first opportunity to play Orlando this season. They lost the season series last year, winning one and losing two. Now brought to you by State Farm, a look at Orlando's starting lineup. And for the Timberwolves. Too bad for Minnesota last year. Things were really going along smoothly, and then Ricky Rubio tore his ACL, which was a big loss for the Wolves. But uh, this is a team with a bright future. A lot of good young talent and a great coach in Rick Adelman. Doris Burke had a chance to catch up with head coach Rick Adelman, and Doris, what do you have to say? The frustration was evident in his voice when I asked him about the way their season had been developing. He told me, we've been learning the hard way that anything less than a 100% effort is not going to get it done. I want to see my guys a lot hungrier than they have been. That would certainly help, gentlemen. Thank you, Doris. Yeah, Steve, it just seemed last year was just a glimpse of, of what the Wolves could accomplish. And as they continue to grow, and as a team, you have to look at their uh, their outlook on things, certainly. But from afar, it looks like their, their compass is pointing in the right direction. Without question, Kevin, I mean, they still need to address some defensive issues, but they showed last year that they can get up and down the floor and score the basketball with anybody. The Minnesota Timberwolves come into this one following a loss to the Raptors in Toronto. And Kevin, when you don't take advantage of your trips to the free throw line, which they definitely did not, it's tough to recover from. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, they left a lot of cheese and lettuce at that foul line part. <laughs> not to mention some ham and turkey, but... <laughs> the Timberwolves shooting their first free throw of the night here. Well, they were a fairly decent free throw shooting team a year ago, Kevin, about 77% uh, from the line. And you can't take those numbers lightly, fellas. I mean, their free throw shooting made a difference for them in a lot of their games last season. Gets it to go. And that's now nine points for Jameer Nelson. Boy, Kevin, I like the way they've come out here. I mean, they're shooting it well and with confidence from outside. Just a good, strong start for them. The Timberwolves shooting their second and third shots at the line right here. You know, success at the line just became contagious for them. A few guys got on a roll, and it carried over to the rest of the team. Some changes for Minnesota. Okur comes in for Nick Collison, and it's Ibaka in for Kevin Durant. Launches a three. Rebounded by Serge Ibaka. The Timberwolves have gone two for four from the field so far today. Can't hit. The Magic go the other way with it. This game coming after a loss against the Jazz. And the cold night they had from the field was really what lost in that game, guys. Yeah, but there were some things they could have done to improve their percentage that they did not do, Steve. For example, better screens, better ball movement, crisper passes. I needed to see more of that. 125 left in the first quarter. That's tipped. Gets it to go. He's got five. I like it. He could have gone for the forced finish, but opted instead for kind of a nice, smooth finger roll. I like it. Inside. Jumps up. And it's Jones. That time in the assist by O'Neal. Love the finish there. Not much defense, though. From deep three-point range, the rebound by the Timberwolves. Eighteen feet out, pushes up, and Ibaka slams it in. You know, that kind of play will get you some brownie points with your coach, no doubt. <laughs> and with your fans, too, Clark, on a big dunk like that. And <laughs> even with the announcers. Oh, yeah! <laughs> we all love it. <laughs> Orlando with the ball. After the basket by Minnesota. Wide open, couldn't capitalize. And first quarter, we're about three and a half minutes in. Expanding his range. He has no fear, guys. He is more than willing to mix it up in the paint with the big boys. For three. Once again off the mark, Orlando. Timberwolves trail by five. 
Offline with the baseline jumper. Both teams deciding to change it up. Seven seconds left in the first. With one on the clock. The basket's coming early and often in the first quarter. Mad. And now the second quarter just getting set to start. And what do you guys think about the Magic here so far in this one? I was impressed with their transition game, guys. They really got out and ran the lanes. Yeah, they did. I mean, no better way to get easy buckets than through fast breaks. This is how the floor looks for the Magic starting the second. Some nice ball movement by the Magic. No good. The Timberwolves trade. They'll be playing host to Portland for their next game. That'll be the second game of a five-game homestand. Goes back up. He flies to the bucket and lays it in. This game very well could come down to a few possessions, and if that's the case, rebounding could play long. Yeah, in a close game like this, when securing the ball is so vital. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Gentlemen, the Timberwolves seem to be turning a corner in respectability, and even the real powerhouse teams in the league are taking notice. Reigning MVP and NBA champion LeBron James said, they're a good team. If they continue on the path that they're on now, they can become a playoff team because they have veterans and they have young guys. When you have that type of mix and that chemistry with Coach Adelman and their system, they can do it. If not right now, then very soon. Gentlemen, we'll see. Door is a lot of promise on this team. We'll see how they develop. The shot is off. You know, guys, Minnesota coach Rick Adelman, the second most wins among active NBA coaches currently. I mean, he's eighth all time on the wins list. And with this young Minnesota team, I really think his skills as a teacher, which are outstanding, certainly come into play. He's one of the best that we've had on the sidelines in the history of the league. Well, you're not going to get a more high-quality look than that. Terrific offensive rebound there. Let's it go from 14. Boy, for my taste, he's far too inconsistent with that shot. I mean, he's got to make those if he's going to... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, he flushed that one down and then hung around here. Marvel at his work a little bit. <laughs> get it pointed with that rim. And giving the photographers an extra second or two, I guess. And the highlight real replay. Brought to you by Sprite. Good stuff. Whole new look on the floor for Minnesota. Orlando also making some changes. I inject in for a flaw. Harrington comes in for Glenn Davis. And it's Jody Meeks in for Jordan Hill. That's good. And he will take the ball right into the teeth of the defense. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the second quarter. And yes, sir, that one drops. The Magic have drawn one of six in the field in the second quarter. It's been a rough period so far. He's again. And the shot is good. Even with the D lurking, he made it look easy with the soft finger roll. Timberwolves have gone four of eight so far here in the second quarter. 18 feet out. And again, it's Minnesota. Both these teams really fighting hard here. This is a, an impressive matchup. Yeah, I, not much separation able to be created either way, and I really marvel at the effort being expended by both of these teams. And so it's Minnesota with it. Their defense has only allowed four points in the quarter. The shot is off. The tray. And Chris Duhon pulls it down. Orlando trailing here. From deep, and Harrington with the basket on the assist by Meeks. He's got five. Boy, these threes are picking them apart. I mean, four out of the last five shots against them, all uncontested, and all are threes. Yeah, the defense just looks uninterested right now. I mean, they're not making the effort to challenge these shots. And out of bounds as the Timberwolves gain possession. Both teams will make substitutions. There's 18 seconds left in the first half of the game. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Way to play in attack mode and get inside. 
And you know, if you're on defense and you're going to foul, make sure it's a good one. They did, preventing the and one. The Timberwolves shooting their fourth and fifth shots at the foul line in the game. And you know, that just added to their confidence at the offensive end. I mean, knowing that free throw shooting was something they didn't have to worry about gave them a lot of confidence to play freely. Orlando leading. Can't get it to go. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Four seconds left. And Westbrook gets it to go on the assist by O'Neal. He's got five. Guys, what a tight start to the game this has been. You know what? Can you believe there have been seven lead changes already, guys? Wow. Yeah, we're still in the first half. I mean, the way this thing is going, this could turn into a wild one. Second quarter ends in a tight one. Timberwolves ahead, leading by a point. And we'll get it going after this from the Target Center. Now, presented by Sprint. Welcome to 2K Sports. The Miami Heat will go up against the Bucs. Welcome back, everybody. The start of the second half getting underway. Both teams battling hard through the first half. Nelson having a good one. He has nine points, and he's nailed three from long range. That's nine points from deep. Well, I like that he's not hesitating to pull the trigger. I mean, if he's got room, he's going to take the shot. He's putting some fear in this defense. Our second half of basketball, and presented by Gatorade. Let's see who's all fueled up and on the floor to start the third. And so in the game for the Timberwolves. One-on-one -on -one fast break from the sideline. Let's catch up with Doris Burke. Well, plenty of players have needed to wear face masks at certain points in their careers. But there's one player for whom the mask has become a permanent fixture, and that's Rip Hamilton. After breaking his nose three times, he was in danger of needing major surgery if he broke it again. So he's worn the mask ever since. Rip said, I take pride in it. That's like my cape. There's a lot of great players in the NBA, and that separates me from everybody else. So I love it. It's my identity, and I'll wear it the rest of my career. Kevin? Well, Doris, it is a signature look. Thank you. The shot is off. Nice D from Durant. Another board just continuing to add to that big rebound margin. And it's a bit ironic, guys. I mean, you would think the score wouldn't be so close the way they're dominating the glass. But this one is still in the balance. Well, there's no doubt about Perry Jones' athletic ability. 6'11", strong, quick. I think the question with him is his energy, his motor. Got a very laid-back personality. And you have to wonder, does he want to dominate the way great players do? And we'll see. And so it's Minnesota with it after the Magic pick up two. Releases. And uh, we're about a minute and a half here into the second half. And Durant, here we go. Another shot. He lays it in with a soft touch. It seems like Perry Jones, despite his 6'11 size, considers himself more of a perimeter. Wouldn't you say? Hey, yeah, you know, Kevin, he could be one of those guys that could be conflicted by his vast skills. I mean, he's a 6'11 guy that can handle the ball, he can shoot it, can pass it, rebounds effectively. And it's just a matter of him identifying what he needs to do to be impactful on a consistent basis. But he, to me, has a chance to be an outstanding two-way player. So it's Minnesota now. Following the three from Jameer Nelson. Screened by Ibaka. Down to five on the shot clock. The Timberwolves need to get a shot off here. And poor shot selection there. Not a high percentage look for him. So far, he hasn't made much of a contribution at the offensive end. Well, Orlando had its ups and downs last year, Kevin, but uh, one thing they were able to do pretty well was hold their own against the West. Not a great record, uh, but, but they're able to win some games uh, you know, against the, the Western Conference teams, and that's not an easy thing to do. Just under two and a half minutes into the third quarter now. Trying his luck deep. Another miss by Minnesota. Boy, the defense just backing off, begging him to take that shot. A second chance effort, and he finishes on the layup. And it's a three-point magic lead. The Timberwolves have gone three of seven on field goal attempts here in the second half. They get a hand on it. Can 
they get it. And that one's good. Nine points in the game so far. And the East as a whole struggled to get wins against the West. We all know that. But the Orlando Magic were able to get seven wins last year, which uh, given their injury struggles clerk throughout the body of the season isn't that bad Kevin it wasn't just injury struggles it was in-house fighting as well I mean we all know about the drama of last season had a little reality TV going on there in Orlando and it looked to take its toll on the team and how they played throughout the latter part of the season the quick look no good that time the magic have gone four of nine from the four so far in the third six seconds separating the shot and game clocks Puts it up from 17. Launches it. It's hauled in by the Magic. The full court prayer falls off target. Puts up a three. And we reach the end of the third quarter. Just a terrific. Welcome back as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. Who's at the Sprite uncontainable game in this one? Well, let's send it out to our Doris Burke. Doris? Yes, Kevin. Our uncontainable game in this one, the stretch by the Timberwolves. Some knockdown defense early on is what allowed them to build their lead. I'm guessing you can expect more of the same here in the fourth to finish the game. Doris, thank you. And what a concerted effort they put together tonight. And, you know, that was really the uncontainable aspect in this game, Kevin. They got on the same page as a team and pretty much did what they wanted for the entire stretch. Well, clearly it's a different game without that scoring run. That was a game-changing run, no doubt. On the court for Orlando. Fires from deep. Gets the bucket. And the Timberwolves lead by three. And defensively, remember, you got to fight through screens to avoid giving up open looks. Yeah, you're exactly right, Steve. And the defense has to go over the top of that screen. I think that's how they get it done. Well, they've had the advantage on in rebounding all night, but none bigger than the one right there. Takes it right up. Shooting over the summer, Perkins. He's off on the first. Andrew Godlock, who's checked in for Orlando. Harrington comes in for Glenn Davis. He hits the second from the line. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back, but making it a two-possession game was the key, and he got that done. Fires the three. Rebound, Minnesota. Fourth quarter, still young, just over a minute play. And that one's good. They got on this roll a while ago, and they just haven't looked back. Good work turning that into an easy two-point. He can attack the rim as well as anybody. And Jameer Nelson gets the three. No question about it, guys. He's been one of their best performers today. And the Timberwolves call time here. And when you take a look at what the story of the glass has been, tremendous presence under the basket. Yeah, you said it. Tremendous presence. You're right. It definitely has been. And it might come down to the final possession, that key rebound. Wouldn't that be something? Mm -hmm. Jordan Hill, he's checked in for Andrew Goudlock. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Yes, Kevin. Well, Rick Adelman had some advice for his team over that last break. He told the guys that for now, he wants to see them back off the three-point shot, saying all our offense doesn't need to come from perimeter jump shots. Let's get the ball inside for some high-percentage looks. Thank you, Doris. And the call will be against Jameer Nelson. That's his third foul of the game. Memo Okur is checked in for Nick Collison. Six to shoot. From the arc. Oh, Harrington grabs the board. And as they grab one there, I was going to make the point that they just haven't done enough in terms of rebounding the ball. I agree. It's Durant on the wing. Screened by Perkins. An easy layup after coming off the pit. And the Timberwolves lead by five. Not much resistance for him after that pick, Kevin. I mean, he had all sorts of space to hit the shot. Nick Collison's checked in for Minnesota. And a switcher also for Orlando. Jody Meeks, he's checked in for Jameer Nelson. Fourth quarter of play, we're about two and a half minutes through it right now. 
You know, to cut deficits, you got to be making smart basketball plays out there. Taking care of the ball, it's not done by hoisting up bonehead threes like that. Not stop, there's no way to stop that. I mean, there's nothing you can do when he's coming at him like that. Well, that's right, Clark. Uh, Steve, he is a dangerous, dangerous player. Yeah, especially when he gets to that launching pad right there in the lane. I mean, pretty one-handed finish. That was nice. Timberwolves passing it around. Buries it down low. That's where you like to get shots inside and close to the hoop. The Magic trail by the six. That's going to be tough here, Clark. You know, I agree with you, Steve. I mean, they need some big plays to steal this one. But I tell you what, guys, his struggles from the field have definitely taken their toll on the team today. And Jones slams it in. Pretty significant laps there on the defensive end, guys. Yeah, those are the ones you just can't allow them. No, if you're giving up dunks and layups defensively, you're in huge trouble. Good. The Timberwolves have gone six of eight in the field in the fourth so far. It's been a great start to this final quarter for them. A bit under three and a half minutes have passed here in the fourth. And the foul against Hito Tripoli. That is his first foul of the game. 41 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Lock at six. Fades away. Shot misses. So Orlando will take it the other way. Let's the free fly. Count it. What a beautiful shot to bring him to within three. Boy, they have just gone crazy from three-point range since coming out of the halftime break. Boy, it's been one three after another, Steve. An absolute barrage. First free throw is good, and that gives them a four-point cushion. So he goes two for two at the line, and it's a five-point game. Two-possession game now, so strategically everything changes a little bit. Those were very important foul shots. There's 18 seconds left in the fourth quarter. They get it back. Can't get it to go. It's the kind of defense required when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were right in his face. Can't get the first one to drop.